I'm Alistair Bellamy. I'm an associate professor in the history department. I'm a specialist on the history of England, 16th and 17th century, mostly on political culture. The Arts of Power is a course that I developed when I first arrived at Rutgers as a kind of interdisciplinary approach to an element of political history that's central to my own work. I wanted to look on a sort of huge chronological canvas from the ancient world to the present. Signature course, The Arts of Power, is a course about the way in which political power has been legitimated using cultural means across two millennia of Western history. What I mean by cultural means are various uh, activities including political ritual, political image making, uh, political myth making, the telling of stories about politics. These are all forms of cultural production that we can analyze using the tools of the historian, uh, literary critic, the political theorist, the art historian, the anthropologist. Power reproduces itself, is legitimated aesthetically as well as all the other ways power operates, and it's that aesthetic dimension of power and its legitimacy that we're going to focus on. The signature course, The Arts of Power, I mean, the, the title is, is a little punny. It's not really a guide to how to exercise power. It's not uh, Machiavelli's The Prince blown up into a lecture course, as useful as that might be for some students, I imagine. What it is trying to capture is the kind of aesthetics of power, which is to do with kind of various forms of cultural production, some of it high culture. So we will look at you know, canonical works of art by painters like Velasquez, Van Dyck, Rubens. So, you know, we'll look at paintings, we'll end up in the 20th century looking at film. We'll look occasionally at song, both kind of rude demotic song attacking uh, rulers, but also revolutionary song. We'll look at theatre. From two angles, we'll look at the kind of the theatre of majesty, for instance, the, the rituals that surround monarchy, and also then the rituals that are surround sort of modern systems, both totalitarian and democratic. I mean, one of the things that characterizes my own work as a historian has, has always been to sort of broaden the range and variety of material that historians look at when they're trying to explore questions in the past. Traditionally, historians look at written sources, documents, but this is a, a massively kind of confining uh, uh, arrangement uh, to, to work with. And so students coming to the class are going to have a version of my approach to history, which is that anything produced in a past culture is potentially historical evidence. We will look at everything from paintings to statues, buildings to accounts of rituals, manuals for courtiers to propaganda movies, uh, photographs of Queen Victoria to footage of uh, Princess Diana's funeral. All this stuff is material for the cultural historian and if we ignore it we miss huge tracks of human endeavor. Part of what we want to do in this class is to teach students how to look at, listen to, political images, political rhetoric, uh, and understand how power legitimates itself. And so we provide them with certain tools. Uh, how do we look at a political ritual? Why, why do we have rituals? What are rituals? Uh, how do you interpret ritual? What about political image? Why, why do paintings of kings mean so much to the kings who commission them? You know, why is it so important in an electoral campaign in, in the present to have a logo or a campaign poster or an iconic shot that you want to use. What we do in the discussions is look at primary material through this long sweep of history and we sort of teach students how to read and how to interpret these various things. One thing a student of this course might get by the end of it is the ability to look at this promotional video and deconstruct it. We had a conversation earlier about whether I looked professorial or not, which is an argument about authority and power, a certain kind of cultural authority. And one of the debates I had with myself today was whether I should wear a tie. Because the tie signifies a certain thing. I even brought a tie with me. So I've got a tie right here. And this is, this is an icon of authority because uh, you might assume it's a college tie. It looks like a college tie. You might assume it's probably a very nice college. But everything about a video like this from the way they've lit to this sort of in the backdrop which suggests I'm a cultivated person. Everything about the image you might be looking at now, you can pull apart. You can deconstruct my cultural authority quite easily. Probably don't want them doing that too much during the class itself, uh, as I have to unfortunately assert some power over them, grades and all that kind of thing. But thinking about the way an image like this promoting something or someone is in fact a potent fiction designed to persuade and convince. What I hope to leave students with are a set of ideas that enable them to critically engage with all kinds of persuasive imagery and therefore engage in their political world with a far greater degree of understanding uh, and always with you know, the capacity to think about how you might change what isn't working, what isn't satisfying.